Hi. Let's just put this down here. Over the course of the last few years, uh, I conducted a PhD research at the University of Groningen in the north of the Netherlands. This research project focuses on the oh, wait a second focuses on the design and development of early medieval uh, longhouses in the north of the Netherlands. For the structural reconstruction of these buildings, comparisons with similar historically documented uh, buildings throughout the North Sea area proved to be very informative. With regard to Scotland, this concerned longhouse, longhouses such as the Historic Environment of Scotland and National Trust for Scotland properties of 42 Arnold Black House on Lewis, Sunnybreak Cottage in Pitlochry, and Morlanach Mor Longhouse in Kalin uh, on uh, Loch Tay, that is. Regarding the construction of turf buildings, traditional skills, training, and site visits in Iceland were of particular importance. And actually, that was one of the outcomes of our first meeting mm -hmm. uh, in Edinburgh that uh, Brian pointed me towards uh, a great course in uh, uh, turf building techniques in Iceland. Lengthy conversations with the late Scottish building historian Bruce Walker helped to further shape my views on all, all, on all aspects of longhouse construction and uh, developed an, an, an awareness for the greater European significance of Scottish couple, couple construction and thatching techniques. Our first, I'll just skip to the next one. Um, our first, where was I? Archaeological example for the use of a clay thatched roof in the Netherlands is due to be published shortly. And the same publication will contain this drawing, this one, of a 12th century turf walled longhouse, reconstructed with a coupled roof <coughs> and a heather thatch. Indeed, knowledge about the Scottish vernacular is already informing the interpretation of excavated house plans elsewhere. Today I will focus mostly on turf, however, and how reconstructing turf buildings may change our views on future building conservation, uh, conservation work and sustainable new builds. My research started in 2009 following the request of a local heritage museum in the northwest of the Netherlands to design a reconstruction model for an early medieval turf longhouse. Such buildings are known to have been the common type of farm building in that region from at least the 5th to the 8th century AD. The museum was planning to reconstruct one, hoping to draw in more visitors. During my initial work as a master's student, training uh, in traditional turf construction in Iceland first made me aware of how casual one's approach to maintenance work could be. If part of a wall is bad, just cut it out and replace it, I can hear the master turf builder say. When looking elsewhere, I started recognizing the rare physical remains of what may best be, de be described as a flexible maintenance attitude. In Scotland, for example, instances have been recorded of byre uh, gables remaining to be built in turf longer than other parts of the longhouses, to continue the custom of repeatedly breaking down and rebuilding the gable as live livestock was sealed in and let out of the byre on an annual cycle. Equally so, the common uh, the once common use of dug-in posts, small diameter round wood, as in creel houses or basket houses as they're also co called, or clay for walling, mortars and renders, and of course thatch for roofing, all serve to illustrate that the attitude towards building maintenance in the past must indeed have been substantially different from what ours is today. One might argue that people in the past had little choice to do otherwise, as long-lasting modern building materials were not yet available. I find it increasingly difficult, however, to argue that we are currently better off in using these modern building materials. Either way, useful advantages can be associated with a relatively short, short cycle use of building materials in the past. In short, the use of simple but fit for purpose techniques meant that c communities were well able to provide their own housing, use and reuse locally sourced natural materials and recognize and deal with essential main maintenance work themselves. Indeed, I wouldn't be the first to state that our, in our current search for ways to provide sustainable housing, we seem to be missing the obvious, looking back. I first described the term flexible maintenance attitude in my master thesis. I think this is one too far. Well, that is it. Um, where I highlighted its importance if the museum was indeed to actually uh, build their turf house. I soon found myself conducting a PhD research, however, and seeking to take this, uh, this building project on uh, as an experiment of my own. 
I would like to show you a video clip that gives an overview of the efforts that were made to involve the local community uh, in this turf house project. It's a 60-second pitch that resulted in a second prize for my research uh, in my university's Sustainable Society Impact Award. I don't think it has any sound uh, with it, and, and, but it has subtitles. As a modern society moves towards the future, the past is often frowned upon. Traditionalism, feudalist backwardness, and as we strive for sustainability on many levels, the worth of past life is revalued. In an effort to rediscover how long houses were built in the north of the Netherlands, I set out to reconstruct an early medieval turf house. Supported by governments and various organizations, many local volunteers joined me on this journey. And last year, I set back some successes with the public, making the book and even a TV documentary. The first step was taken in rekindling a building tradition, long lost and forgotten. Building traditions that were well in the past may inspire us to build more sustainably in the future, applying local building materials in a low-tech manner, building load-bearing walls on turf blocks and strong roof structures from cooking timbers. Archaeologically inspired eco-homes would be in tune with their natural surroundings, have a distinctive regional character, a healthy indoor environment, and empower the communities that build them. During the reconstruction project, I encountered two major problems in further developing archaeologically inspired eco-homes. Firstly, the lack of technical understanding of these archaeological buildings. I'm very grateful for recently having been awarded a full bursary placement on the Historic Environment Scotland's Technical Building Conservation course at the Engine Shed in Stirling. This course is already answering many of the questions concerning this first aspect. The second problem concerns current society's approach to maintenance which I consider to be one of the main factors involved in the loss of traditional buildings and associated skills. I would like to illustrate the difficulties I previously encountered in changing people's views on maintenance and how I currently approach this in a different manner. I recall well on one of the first days into reconstructing my turf house in the Netherlands, being casually asked by one of the museum's uh, committee members, once it's finished, how, uh, who will come and do the maintenance work? I used my time on site as well as I could to explain turf building to our local volunteers while stressing the value of having these volunteers learning to build with turf to museum uh, committee members. The fact that only one of these members was actively involved in the building uh, didn't really help with their bonding with this potentially very useful uh, turf building squad. Moreover, as soon as the turf house was completed in June 2013, museum staff went away on holiday. Um, this left a single volunteer to cope with a sudden increase in visitor numbers and left her exclaiming uh, that numbers had better not rise any further. They did, I must admit, have a tenfold in uh, visitor numbers. They went up from 4 to 40 uh, per day. So um, a significant increase, but still not much altogether. Volunteers from the build had previously expressed their willingness their desire even to help out at the museum, but as I later discovered, they had never heard from the museum after the building uh, work had finished. With regard to the building's maintenance, this disconnection between the museum and its community uh, severely affected the frequency with which a fire was lit inside the building. The museum, and therefore the turf house too, were only in use two afternoons per week. Throughout each stage of the project, the importance of having the fire lit to help dry out the wall and the roof had been stressed. However, the building noticeably struggled to recover from the extremely wet uh, building period in the fall of 2012, and the large amount of smoke resulting from the use of firewood that had been stored inside the moist building soon led to no fire being lit at all. Due to a non-related collapse, there now stands a newer turf house the design of which we moved away from its academic ideal to ensure sufficient drying irrespective of the building's use. Close involvement of the uh, Regional Museum Federation is currently helping to incorporate the reconstruction's maintenance needs uh, in the museum's long-term plans and budgeting. Since the reconstruction's reopening in the summer of 2015, however, it has still been the regional government's initiative, rather than the museum's own sense of responsibility, to periodically commission a condition survey of the building and seek advice for its upkeep. 
The Turf House project has produced more information and insights on uh, regarding turf construction than I will be able to publish for many years, but it has also made me aware of two important limitations in constructing experimental archaeological buildings for an open air museum. Firstly, there is scope for repetition. Uh, there's little scope for repetition and variation uh, of the experiment, although I suppose I was strangely uh, fortunate to repeat my experiment once. Secondly, any full-blown archaeological reconstruction will not be used for what the original type of building was intended for. Reconstructed houses are not lived in uh, or cared for accordingly. Last year, I've worked as an independent archaeological consultant and eco-builder. My aim is to provide the public more direct access to information on building customs, uh, ancient building customs that is, and create opportunities for the modern application of archaeological knowledge and skills. I would like to show some examples of re uh, recent projects. Uh, the first is a roof for a, uh, a clay-built pizza oven uh, in my town, in, in, in the, the center of Lelystad, the, the town I live in, in the Netherlands. This was my own in initiative to learn more about uh, this Celtic couple construction. <coughs> this is a, an experimental turf arch, uh, part of a workshop commissioned by the Young London Academy as part of their conference, quickly built but nevertheless uh, successful. The third one is a, a situ tree um, in someone's allotment. This is actually a, uh, a word that we've grown to, to use in the Netherlands because it just works so well. Um, I helped to start up this build, uh, but uh, the construction was finished by the now very proud owners themselves. So is there a wider interest for such archaeo based building? Will this help to develop and maintain traditional skills? Possibly, yes. This is just set up for five designs of all natural uh, turf roof roofs uh, based on archaeological and ethnographic sources throughout the North Sea uh, and North Atlantic region, uh, commissioned by the Centre for Alternative, Alternative Technology in Wales and forming, part, uh, forming a workshop for uh, 70 Master of Science students in natural buildings, in natural buildings. Um, this uh, a workshop conducted only a few weeks ago is a workshop and test set up for a double bottle wall delivered together with Tanya Romankovic from the University of Edinburgh and the first part of an archaeo based outbuilding. What's more, um, this last client was completely taken away by the idea that his outbuilding could have a short lifespan and biodegrade uh, to be subsequently used as a buyer. Uh, as a shed, I must say, a buyer or pigsty, compost heap, and ultimately as a raised planting bed. This notion of circular building is central to, his first, uh, to this first design concept that he's drawn up. <coughs> so yes, maybe there is scope for even the most endangered traditional building skills, such as building with turf, uh, to find new uses, for these to be learned and used actively by a larger public, for even uh, uh, even for our changing our current views in building conservation and sustainable building, um, all by relearning traditional skills of maintenance too. Thank you. <laughs>